they're not going to have any people here for you. Um, and that you can just try to get as much of the 531 here and yeah. don't. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi, John. Hello, Julie. Hello, Andrew. How are you guys? Not bad. How are you doing, John? Pretty good. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> 531 is going to be at, uh, the first, uh, first matter, I take it, right? Yes. It is. Just a minute. Excellent. I suspect I'll be in the background. <laughs> Hard to believe. John, what's in the bottle? <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like water, doesn't it? It sure does. <laughs> Julie, I, I take it the meeting has not started yet, right? Correct. So may I ask you, did I count it right at 745 that I do um, come out and do a review of the case as well as just kind of let everybody know that you're back and that you're here? Yeah, I do understand that. Okay, good. Thank you. What about Nick? Oh, yep. there's Nick. Nick, I don't know if you're Heather Cohn. You can be with him. I don't have him. Let me try it here. I just looked my email, she didn't email me, so. How's your audio working now, Heather? It's fine, it's, <laughs> it's, it's total user issue where I was doing it actually on our much nicer at home computer, but I don't know how to quickly operate the volume on that one. So I went to the one that's more familiar. <laughs> I like the big computer because I can look at the big page.
Well, uh, why don't we call this meeting of CPDC to order? Um, I guess what I first want to do start off is, um, uh, Julie, do you want to give a little bit of a background on the sort of the, the rules of engagement or how we're going to um, manage this, uh, this meeting um, from a, from a zoom perspective? Yeah, sure. And I just want to make sure, Andrew, have you started recording? Uh, it is started. Okay, great. Um, so hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, on the screen here, we have the various members of the Community Planning and Development Commission. They're probably all scattered for, for most of you. Um, but we have Chair John Lesson. We have Secretary Rachel Hitch. We have Nick Safina, Heather Klisch, and Tony Diarezzo. Um, we are hoping that Pamela Adrian will be joining us and that's the full commission. Um, so basically the way this works is that Andrew and I will kind of be co-hosting it. I'll be doing the screen share. He'll be monitoring the waiting room. Um, we'll both be um, monitoring the raise hand feature. So we, we ask that you use the raise hand feature if you have any comments you'd like to make. Um, the standard process for these hearings is that, you know, typically the uh, secretary will read the public hearing notice and then the development team will describe the proposal to everyone. Um, the board will talk and ask questions and then we'll open it up to public comment. So if you have, if you're a member of the public and you have comments to make, just know that we will be getting to it. It just might not be for a while. Um, you can always raise your hand and when the time comes, we will be monitoring that and we will know that that's how you want to participate. And once the chair acknowledges you, you can unmute yourself and give your comment. Um, on the screen right now, you should see the agenda for the meeting. The agenda has the Zoom link. This meeting will be recorded and it is being live streamed by RCTV. Um, so I am also monitoring my work email if anyone has any issues who's watching at home or, or who's in the meeting right now and they can't get in um, I will be watching my emails and I'll, I'll try to help you that way for anyone who's in the meeting if you're having technical issues there's also the chat feature which you can use to chat me directly about technical issues I ask that you please do not chat amongst yourselves um, or have any private non-technical chats through that um, as this is a public meeting um, so once this meeting gets started, I'd ask for anyone who's uh, not muted to mute themselves, please. And when the development team is presenting, obviously you can unmute yourselves. Um, the commission members will be giving feedback at first, at least in a, in a raised hand or roll call kind of uh, format. And then, you know, for commission members with, with further comments down the line, if you wanna use the raised hand feature as well, we'll be monitoring that and we'll let John, the chair, know. Um, so, I think that's all for me. Again, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, Julie. Um, great overview. Um, so as you can see, I think we'll get right into it. Um, as you can see, the first item on our agenda is uh, a public yeah. hearing um, for a site plan yeah. review for 531 Main Street. Um, and um, I'm assuming that we have someone here from the applicant. I see Chris Latham here. Is that is that you, Chris? That's, that's me, John. How are all you? All right. <laughs> Good. Good. So I presume that you have a presentation o overview of the um, of the development you want to give. Yes, that would be great. Right. And, and I'm basically just going to read my statement and I'll turn it over to the team architect and then the team engineer. And if Andrew or Julie, if you guys just want to show uh, different aspects of the plan while we talk, that's fine. Um, so if I, if I may, uh, Chris Latham on behalf of the applicant, ACGRE Reading LLC with principal Severio Falsinetti and architect Rob Passiano and engineer Aaron McKay for the, for the uh, applicant's team. This proposed 40-hour redevelopment of 531 Main Street is all about providing the town with more affordable rental units that frankly would not otherwise be constructed. 
as well I'm as- sorry, can I, so I'm sorry, Chris, I don't mean to interrupt you. We have a member of the commission that needs to make a disclosure really quick. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, this is Nick Safina. I, um, I did file a disclosure of appearance of conflict of interest uh, just to be on the safe side, but I believe that one of the applicants is an employer of um, my wife's nephew. Um, just for the record. Okay. Thank you, Nick. All right. Should I proceed? Please do. Okay. Um, so, frankly, so uh, frankly, what's being proposed here is affordable housing. Um, that would not otherwise be built. And it's taking a vacant and under, underutilized uh, building that's been vacant for years and redeveloping it. Uh, the proposal is to create a vibrant mixed use building with space for one commercial tenant and provide 19 residential housing rental units, including five units of affordable housing and four units of workforce housing. The five affordable rental units would be 25% of the total units, 26% of the residential units and lease to eligible ho households in accordance with uh, bylaw section 10510. Um, Barnstable Housing Authority is proposed to be the acting monitoring agent. Uh, four, four of the residential rental units will be workforce housing. Uh, workforce housing units are generally defined as units that are more economical to working households with incomes less than 60% of the annual median income up to 100% of the median uh, area median income. Uh, for reference, 2015, uh, Reading's median income was about 107,000. Workforce housing is commonly targeted as, quote, ascent for essential workers in a community such as police officers, firemen, firewomen, teachers, nurses, medical personnel, and service workers. Uh, workforce housing is needed, especially where there are high real estate costs and a high number of low paying service jobs that are still essential to the local economy. With that said, 531 Main Street is located on the eastern side of Main Street, south of the Common in the Business B Zoning District in the downtown Smart Growth District. The property is 120.7 uh, feet from the abutting apartment A40 District. The property uh, had been the site of the Davis Service Station and then the Daily Times Chronicle newspaper uh, until the Chronicle moved its offices to Woburn several years ago. The building has been vacant since the Chronicle moved. The existing commercial building was substantially built in 1929. The Town uh, of Reading Historical Commission has listed the existing structure at 531 Main Street on the town's list of historic and ar architecturally uh, inventory protection um, by the town's demolition delay bylaw. The applicant has not filed a demolition permit, but it has appeared before the Historical Commission on July 1st to discuss the project. The proposed building will be entitled The Chronicle with exterior signage and will include photos, front page newspaper printouts, and a brief history of the Daily Times Chronicle at the entry level and stair lobby to depict the history and the culture of the lot in the town of Reading. Based on comments from the Historic Commission, the applicant also proposes to revise its plans to have a window display depicting the history of the property. Uh, the, the Reading Daily Times Chronicle uh, and the town and a portion of the brick wall at the corner of Main and Chapin. Uh, this would be on the Main Street um, frontage. The project uh, maintains an entrance on Main Street at street level and adds a new commercial unit uh, at, the, at the corner of Main and Chapin, which will be located within 300 feet of the municipal parking lot. Uh, so it would comply with 10.58 of the uh, zoning bylaws. The proposed building will be four stories with a garage beneath and a setback at the fourth floor. Uh, the building will consist of a mix of one and two bedroom rental units designed with open floor plans, abundant light and energy, efficient features. It will be fully sprinkled. There will be elevators. There will be open sp uh, space on the roof uh, for 10 shared roof decks. Um, the building design and materials will meet or exceed the building and energy code. The project's lighting will meet dark sky standards. The utilities will be underground. The, po the project will meet DEP stormwater standards and improve the existing condition of the property by directing the structure's runoff onto the prop into the property's drainage system under the proposed garage before it's discharged into the town's drainage system. And it will thus reduce the sheet flow onto uh, Chapin Avenue. The drainage system for the garage includes an oil and water separator as well. The structure, um, a secure underground uh, parking garage for residents is proposed to be built 
into the existing hill from Chapin Avenue uh, to Main Street with a new garage entrance from Chapin Avenue. The entrance to the garage would be approximately 103 feet from Main Street, about 17 feet from the existing garage door um, that's on the existing bu building on Chapin Avenue. The project's density would simply not be feasible, but for the applicant's willingness to make a substantial financial investment in the highly efficient and reliable city lift parking lift technology system that has effectively been utilized in Tokyo, California, Seattle, and New York City. The proposed parking facility would provide a total of 24 garage parking spaces beneath the building. The project proposes to use the city lift parking technology system for 20 spaces, as well as provide one standard parking stall, two compact parking stalls, and one handicap accessible parking stall in accordance with MAAB. Um, efficient space and parking design was an objective for the project. And so basically we were seeking to limit the width of two parking stalls to eight feet, incorporate two compact parking spaces, reduce the aisle width to 20 feet, four inches, and, pro and the proposed curb cut for the garage entrance to 22 feet, eight inches wide. Um, the applicant has requested uh, several waivers from dimensional and, and, and other requirements under section 10.5 via section 10.5.12. Please note that the property is narrow, it's 40 to, seven, uh, 40 to 50 feet um, wide and has uh, basically a small lot, uh, 5,699 square feet. Um, in terms of density, the standard density in the 40 yard district is 20 units per acre and a, a floor area ratio of 2.8 for mixed use projects. This proposed uh, mixed use development is requesting a waiver from 20 units uh, for the affordables to get in there, it's basically 105 units per acre and a FAR of 4.75. This allows the development to provide the five affordable rental units uh, that would not otherwise be constructed, provide four workforce housing uh, units that would not otherwise be constructed, as well as make it economically viable. Um, city lift. Uh, applicant also requests that CPDC waive or approve the project's proposed use of the application of the city lift technology uh, for parking uh, under the waiver authority of 10512 and the commission's additional authority to waive parking standards under section 10584. In terms of parking dimensions, off street parking uh, in enclosed structures should be not less than eight uh, feet, six inches in width, 17 uh, feet in length, and 26 uh, wide aisles. Once again, the lot narrows width and small size, lot size demand more efficient use of the space. Um, the applicant thus requests authorization for two eight foot wide parking stalls, a 20 foot by two inch wide aisle and a 22 by eight inch wide uh, egress to the garage. Applicants re request these waivers under the commission's authority once again under 10512 and 10584. In terms of loading space, the applicant also requests a waiver of the loading space. With that said, if the town is agreeable, a loading area can be located along, uh, along the building on Chapin Avenue, as was done when the Chronicle was in operation to accommodate box uh, type truck deliveries. It is not necessary, we do not believe it's necessary to accommodate trailer trucks as they shall not be used for deliveries to the commercial. Uh, the commercial space proposed for this project is 1,078 square feet. And deliveries will be limited in frequency and time frame. Um, the project does comply with handicap accessible requirements in terms of the van space in the garage. In terms of the building height, um, due to the, once again, due to the property's small lot size and narrow shape, um, to comply with the downtown smart growth design guidelines, the applicant was forced to place parking partially underground because of the topography. Uh, for the entire footprint of the proposed building. This condition raised the proposed building above the 45 feet. The proposed building will thus exceed five stories if one in includes the garage beneath and exceed allowable height uh, with a proposed, and, and basically um, Rob can, can talk in greater detail about that. We also request a waiver in terms of the um, uh, landscape plan. We do propose to uh, preserve the existing uh, tree in the sidewalk um, and the applicant is going to basically be providing some open space for, for tenants on the roof decks. Um, I'll now turn it over to Rob, the architect, and, and he came over basically the uh, uh, 
our compliance or request for waivers relative to the downtown smart growth district design standards and guidelines. Hi, my name is uh, Rob Passioni. I am the architect. Um, so maybe I'll just do a, a walkthrough of the elevations and the building plan so everyone can get a feel for the, for the building and then we can talk about some of the design guidelines. Um, so Julie, if you could shift down to uh, A2.1. Okay, so this is the elevation off of Chapman Ave. Um, so as Chris mentioned, we have a, uh, at the ground level, we have a parking garage. Um, so that is, um, it gets back to that, I'll show you. So that is shown um, as uh, the area of a brick facade. As you can see on the lower left-hand corner, there is the uh, garage entry. That's a little garage door. Um, above that, directly above the garage door in the area that is um, has the clapboard siding, uh, that is uh, residential space. Um, to the right of that is where we have our first floor retail area. Um, that's depicted with that stippled um, uh, building material along with the uh, divided glass windows. Above that, we have the three levels of um, residential. So the, the two levels are mostly clabbered, and then the upper floor has a, has a hardy board type reveal panel system. And those, those three levels are all residential. Um, above that, um, we're showing where the roof decks are located uh, at the roof level in this elevation. And then we have some uh, stair access towers and, and elevator tower. Um, you could skip down to the next page. Um, so here we're seeing the, the front and the rear elevations. So on the left-hand side, we have the front elevation. Um, so in the, the right, lower right-hand corner of that elevation is actually the main entry to the building. Uh, so we have the, the door on the left and then some, some windows with an overhang, which has the building signage, the chronicle. Um, above that is uh, some more windows, which basically uh, provide light to that. Um, it's a two-story vestibule entry space. To the left of that um, is also the uh, first floor retail area where you see that much larger grazing uh, divided lights. Um, so again, above that, we have the three floors of residential. Um, on the left-hand side, or sorry, the right-hand side is the rear of the building. Um, again, here we have the, the brick uh, facade at the garage level, and then above that again, the, uh, the residential. Um, and then if you want to just skip down to the last elevation sheet, one down. And then here we have, uh, you know, what you consider the alleyway side um, of the building. And basically this elevation is um, basically the circulation throughout the building. So it's, it's pretty limited as far as windows and, and everything else. Um, so now I think we can just jump over to the plan. So if you can go back up to sheet, should be sheet A1.6. Okay. Um, so if you can just zoom in a little bit on the lower level plan. So that is the, uh, the garage level. So in the, uh, Uh, go to the, the one below that door. <clears throat> okay, so here, in the upper right-hand corner, um, that is the entry to the garage level. Um, in the, the farthest right-hand, upper right-hand corner is actually a, a bump out we have for the, for the transformer. Um, you can see on the lower side of this plan is where we have all the city lift systems. Um, so it says 20 cars. You can see the, uh, the articulation for that. Um, so there's going to be a total of uh, seven bays. Um, on the right-hand side, we also have some egress stairs, a area for trash, and then the bike storage area on the right-hand side. Uh, just shifting over to the left-hand side of the plan, we have in the far right corner the elevator and some more egress stairs, sprinkler room. Um, this is also where we have our handicapped parking spot and the, the three other 
sacrifice for that stone. Um, shift uh, to the level one plan above. So the, the uh, left-hand side of this plan is actually the main street um, side. So that is where you have the, the main entry into the building. Uh, we combine the, the residential and the uh, commercial entries to take advantage of the, uh, the uh, tight site that we have. Um, so here we have, again, an elevator lobby, stair lobby to get into the building. Um, the, the space above that is where we have the retail, of a little over a thousand feet of retail. Um, and then it, towards the back of the building as it goes along Chapman Ave, we have the uh, residential. So there's uh, basically three smaller units and then one larger two bedroom on this floor. Uh, if we can uh, go to the next sheet. So these are uh, level two and three. Um, again, very similar um, layouts. We have um, you know, approximately five units on each of these floors. Um, the, uh, we, we do have some, which I didn't point out the elevations. We have some outdoor space, some small patios off of uh, most of these units, except for the one at the rear. Um, so there's, there's some outdoor space uh, for each of these. Um, and then, you know, just typical stair, stair egress requirements uh, on uh, in the hallways. Um, then, uh, Julie, if you want to go to the next sheet. Um, go to the bottom plan first. So again, similar to the second and third floor, uh, this is the, the fourth floor, you know, all retail, very similar layouts. Um, and uh, we do have some step backs on this floor. So these units are a little bit smaller. Um, and then lastly, on the roof plan, you can see the, uh, some of the outdoor patio spaces we made the roof decks. Oops. And then, you know, a bunch of space for the uh, screen mechanical equipment. Um, so that's just basically an overview of, of, of what we're doing right now for the, uh, the architecture of the building. Um, and I'll just run through real quick some of the deviations from the uh, design guidelines we wanted to point out. Um, so the first one is uh, the step backs. So we, um, the design guidelines call it a five foot step back on the fourth floor um, at the front and the rear, which we deviated from. Um, Julie, if you wanna just shoot down a, a little bit to the, to the lower level plan on the fourth floor on this sheet. I don't know if it's possible to zoom in on that a bit. Yeah, just want to go down and then that, that's probably good enough. If you can just scroll down a little bit. So here, um, the lower left-hand corner of the, uh, of the plan is the elevator and there's an outdoor patio. There's a line set off of that. That's actually the building below. So that's just along the main street side. So on the main street side, uh, we step back this elevation, uh, this floor level. Um, approximately one foot nine inches along Main Street. That step back actually turns the corner and runs all the way along Chapman Ave. So at this front unit here, it's again about one foot nine um, step back from the floors below. And then the building bumps out a little bit. So the step back for the rest of Chapman Ave is about one foot. And then as we get to the rear of the building, we, we step back again um, a, a, a decent amount uh, to make room for the, uh, for the transformer. Um, at the rear, again, we have a step back for, for the transformer. Um, and then we're actually at the lot line um, along the rear side of the building um, just to make basically room for the ingress and uh, a two unit apartment at this back space. Um, the other deviations we have is um, the building proportion. So as, as you notice along Chapman Ave, um, you know, we articulated the building uh, so we have a bunch of step backs basically due to the transformer and also our, um, our outdoor patios. Um, similarly to the, to the front and the, uh, the back of the building, we have some articulation. We really don't have any articulation as along the, uh, the lower part of this plan. Um, we basically have a straight wall. And as you can see from, the, uh, from this plan, it's basically because of the uh, egress hallway we have along here. 
Um, so what we've tried to do to try to break up that elevation a bit, um, if we go to the elevation, uh, Julie, on sheet uh, 2.3, yeah, 2.3. So this is the elevation of that facade. So basically we tried to articulate it with, with different um, siding and trim um, to try to break that up to, uh, to meet the design guidelines. Um, the other uh, item is the building entry. As I mentioned before, um, the guidelines call out a separate entry for residential and for commercial. Um, but due to the narrowness of the site, we. Uh, we basically had to combine it to uh, get the retail to work. Um, the other item is the uh, building signage. So we're proposing the signage on the front of the building that says the Chronicle, as well as uh, the street address. Uh, the design guidelines call out for natural materials on those. We were proposing that we have um, a metal, uh, presumably aluminum at that front facade. So we're not proposing natural materials. Um, and then the uh, final item we had from deviation was uh, the exterior finish. Um, so for the most part, I think we're meeting the guidelines. Um, there is one small area at the front elevation. Um, if Julie, oh, you got me on the sheet. So the, the left-hand side where we're showing that hatching, uh, the stippling pattern, um, that is actually a stucco. Um, and I noted in the design guidelines that it actually says that this type panels are not permitted. Um, the stucco finish can look similar to, to EFIS. Uh, so we just wanted to point out that that, that may be a, a deviation. Um, the reason that we're actually showing that there is um, the existing building has a similar finish to that. Um, so we're trying to bring some of those historic elements from that building into the new building. So that's the purpose behind why we're doing the stucco here. Um, in a similar fashion, the, uh, the divided glass uh, also is, is drawing some design elements from the existing uh, to bring a different design. Uh, so that's all I have. That's an overview of everything. Um, so I'll turn it over to Aaron to talk about some of the uh, civil engineering. Thanks, Rob. Uh, my name is Aaron Mackey. I'm with Allen and Major Associates, the uh, civil engineers on this project. Uh, Julie, I'd like to start with just the uh, layout and materials plan in the, uh, I think it's the third sheet in our set, just the next one down, I believe, from that sheet. Perfect. Yes, that sheet. If you could zoom in a little bit, that'd be great. Great. Thank you. I'll just touch on uh, a few of the existing conditions items. Uh, the site's located on the corner of Main Street and Chapin Ave. As you can see, it uh, consists of one parcel totaling 5,699 square feet. It's zone business B uh, and also the overlay the DSGD district. Uh, there's an existing building on the site, a one-story building, which is 3,820 square feet. That's to be raised. Um, the existing lot is primarily covered with the existing building. Uh, there's some minimal landscaping along Mass Ave. Um, the site's serviced by municipal water, sewer gas, tele and electric. Um, the proposed site plan, what you're looking at here, we have a 5,497 square foot building pad, four-story building with garage level below, as uh, you have seen from the elevations, um, 19 apartment units and 1,080 square feet of opportunity space. Um, as you can see, the proposed building will take up the majority of the lot. Um, it, it will meet the setbacks of the DSGD overlay, the zero foot setback, side yard setbacks, and it's a 10 foot front yard minimum that we will meet as well. Um, there are 24 parking spaces that would be required as Chris had mentioned before. That's with a ratio of 1.25 spaces per unit. Um, we achieve this with 20 city lift stalls and four stalls which are within the garage floor. Um, 
as you can see from this plan along Main Street, we are proposing to reconstruct the existing sidewalk as well as maintain the brick paneling and that existing street tree will be maintained along Main Street. Um, we will, we're proposing to reconstruct the ADA ramp at the corner, uh, reconstruct that in kind and also um, along Chapin Ave, currently we're showing a bituminous berm with a bituminous sidewalk along the building. Um, that's, we, we propose it that way primarily to reflect what's existing out there. Um, I know there's been discussions with the town and um, I know Severo is open to uh, um, what the town would like to see there. Uh, you can see at the garage entrance, um, we, it's a formalized concrete uh, apron in that location um, to get into the garage. Um, if you could just navigate down one sheet to the drainage, I'll touch on some of the drainage. Thank you. Um, there's very little in the way of existing drainage. I don't believe there's any drainage infrastructure out there. There is I had an existing catch basin in Chapin Ave, um, which you can see that's what we're tying into. Uh, our proposed design, you can see there's two uh, 1,000 gallon dry well tanks. Those will take the uh, clean roof runoff and uh, we're proposing to recharge the stormwater. Um, and that's consistent with the Mass DEP regulations. We've designed that to meet their groundwater recharge requirements. Um, I'd like to point out that the site doesn't trip the town of Reading stormwater management erosion co control guidelines because the site is so small that that's for a one acre parcel, but um, we're proposing this to, to remain consistent with the um, DSGD uh, design guidelines where you're looking for um, some, some groundwater recharge. So we found this to be the, the best way to achieve that. Um, the grading, we, we're, we're looking to maintain the existing grading along Main Street and uh, Chapin Ave. Um, other than that, I think I, I, we can just scroll. It's pretty simple. Uh, we could just scroll down to the utility sheet. One more sheet down. So you can see from this sheet, uh, we are going to bring water in from Main Street um, gas service coming from Chapin Ave. That's the next one down. You can see, um, in sewer is being made. The connection will be maintained out to Chapin. That's, that is where it connects today. Um, you can see the little circle that's within the garage that, uh, Chris had mentioned that's, that is an oil water separator. Uh, we'll need to, to, tie the uh, floor drains from the garage, run them through that oil water separator prior to the sewer uh, being discharged out. Um, and the overhead wires will be removed and we will bring that service in underground to the transformer. You can see pl at the plan right corner. Um, and that's consistent also uh, within the, the DSGD uh, design guidelines. Um, with that, I think that's uh, that's all I have, Chris. Chris, if you have any closing remarks, uh, you, you you want to wrap it up? Yeah, thank you. Um, that's that's pretty much it. Unless Severio has anything he'd like to add, um, and we're we're interested in the uh, the commission's comments because we are actually uh, proposing some things that are brand new to Reading. Nothing on my end. Okay, great, thank you. Thanks everyone for, for that overview. Um, I'm sure the commission has some questions. Um, anyone anyone wanna start? Speak up or I can start. I've got a couple of questions. Sure. Um, first is uh, the trees. Those big, beautiful red maples, they're going to be taken out and you're saying there's a shade tree that's sitting there in that space. Uh, how do you propose replacing 
those trees somewhere in the town or thoughts? Is somebody unmuted? Well, the, the proposal is basically the removal of the two trees that are in the front courtyard. Right. Are, are you suggesting that two trees of, of similar type should be planted somewhere else in town? I am. Okay. Um, obviously, we can take that under advisement and I can okay. discuss it with, uh, with the applicant. Do you have any place in particular that you were thinking for such trees to be planted? No, I would leave that up to the, well, Historic Commission because those trees have been around for a long time or, well, Town Forest, something like that. But we can't keep taking trees down and not replacing them somewhere in town. So I think we need to figure out what to do about that. Um, my next question was relative to the use of this building previously and any toxic chemicals, have they all been removed from site? I don't believe we're aware of any toxic chemicals on this site at all. Okay. They weren't printing on site. At some point, I imagine years ago, I mean, the Chronicle, I don't believe, has been using printing presses there for quite a while. They moved uh, most of their printing operations, I believe, to Woburn. And that was probably, if I had to guess, probably 10, 15 years ago. But I can, we can get you more information on when they actually moved their operations over. Thank you. Um, my next question was relative to the availability of parking for the business end of this building and what you're going to provide for them. Yeah, so um, under the bylaws, if a, if a retail business is located within, I believe it's 300 feet of um, public parking, it can utilize that public parking. And um, I believe there is a plan. I don't remember what sheet it is, but it does show that from the corner of Chapin, um, the corner of Maine and Chapin, where the commercial space is going to be, there's actually, um, it's, it's basically within 300 feet of public parking. So let's pause on that one for a minute. Um, um, so also as part of the design guidelines that the, some of the recent changes that were made um, was sort of not just looking at whether you're 300 feet, but actually coming up with a, a plan for how that parking, how that public parking would be used. So how, you know, how much is it used now? How, um, what the demand for that sp space may be, um, you know, it's uh, to, if I remember correctly, 294 feet away from the corner of your building. So just right. under 300 feet, pretty far away. Uh, there's six, I, have, I think I wrote six or eight spaces in that, um, that lot, which is pretty close to um, full at least most of the time when I drive by there. Correct. Um, so I, I think that, um, you know, right, technically, right, you're, you're allowed, you, you don't need to provide spaces, but what we also need to do is understand how that, um, that whether it's retail or restaurant or whatever, that commercial space um, is functionally going to work with the parking that's available. Which is part, which is in there in the design guidelines as a as a um, requirement. And also, when I went by the building today, 
I noticed there were cars parked all the way down Chapin. And I think I counted eight cars. So is that parking going to be made available or not? On Chapin, right next to this building. We, we are actually not proposing any real modification to that at all. It's okay. got sort of up to the town. That's not really our mm -hmm. domain in that sense. Uh, okay. we, we would like to keep it the way it is because frankly, it's been that way forever since I was living in town. And I know some people think it's crazy, but it, it actually works for the people that live around there. Right. Okay, those were my questions. Mr. Chairman. Oh, go ahead, Tony. Thank you. Um, actually, I believe that lot that's being referenced may not qualify. Uh, the zoning bylaw refers to off street parking and technically that parking lot is an extension of Ash Street. Years ago, Ash Street used to go didn't come and connect to Main Street where it does now after King's Auto it went all the way up to uh, Haven Street and that um, sometime in the last several years the town made the connection and then uh, repaved that parking lot thank you Tony that was that I, I, I thought of that while I was reading through here but I, I Julie I, I think that at some point in the past couple of years, there was a, a, a decision on what was meant by public parking lot. And I know, right, we had that discussion about whether the town lot, I mean, the town hall lot counts, which it, I recall that it didn't. But, um, but I, I also question whether that space counts as well. So maybe there's a little digging we need to do on that. Uh, I was wondering the same thing, actually, and I will look into it. All right. Um, Nick, Nick I, I'm going to call you on you as a longtime uh, uh, member. Do you recall having that discussion or, you know, there's a um, what's a town lot um, definition discussion? I do remember having the discussion, but I, I can't tell you what we decided about that particular one. I do remember the town lot, the town hall lot, not counting. And we were trying to figure out a way to use that one right after hours or something like that. But yeah. But again, the the we re, we fixed up the zoning bylaw to say that they sort of need to present a plan. So even if the lot does count, right, they still need to provide that plan to talk about how things would be used. So they've got their side of it and we need to do our our, uh, our part of it, right? We've got to go and see if that law really counts. And then we have to be realistic about it too. You know, does that lot work for uses like this? Not just this building, but for other buildings that might use it. I don't know if, you know, just finding out if it counts is sufficient because I don't know if it works is much more of a, the question we need to ask. Right, right. I think there's two questions there. One is uh, from, you know, uh, from a zoning perspective, does it count? And then there's the other, um, the, 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 uh, the other question of, can they um, put a plan together that will make it work? So other questions? I know I've got a bunch, but. I guess I have this one. Sure, Heather. Go ahead, Talon. I'm raising my hand in real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah go, 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 go. Sorry, Rachel, I go can ahead, barely go see you. <laughs> I, I can barely see and barely hear, so go, go ahead. Um, this might not be my only question, but I'd like to take a look at the front of the building again. Um, and on the document I'm looking at, it's page 11. My, my question is this, is that when you look at the, and this is in the architectural one, right? Um, am, I, am I looking at this correctly that, that at street level, so, so 
it, it looks to me like you would go inside the door and go upstairs to the retail area. By the way, they are mislabeled. Okay. Um, I didn't even notice that. Um, and so at, at the street level, like if, I, if I'm standing on the street, I'll see the door and the windows to the right and then a wall. So the windows don't start until on the, on the left side there, don't start until the second story. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, that's correct. Um, the reasoning for that, the sort of brick, blank brick wall there and why it's raised up is because of the parking garage. So the, the parking garage is actually partially below grade, um, but it does come up above grade at the front and the rear. Um, so that's so that's why you're seeing that higher elevation. Um, the reason so so where the you see the uh, the building signage in the entry, that's actually been lowered down to meet grade so that we can get handicap access into the building. I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear what you said there. You said that it, the the access is actually at a lower grade than it is now. Yeah, so so where we have um, the entry door yeah. to get into the building, that's actually lower to get access to the uh, to the building for handicap. If, if maybe if you go to the floor plan, you might be able to. I can explain it a little better. And this so is what is that elevation this from Main Street? So you would go. This is where I'm getting a little bit confused. How you would sure. lower the elevation of that? No, he's not lowering it. It is lower. Um, yeah, so if you go to the uh, level one plan on the left hand side, so that is the entry door we were just looking at. So you would come in at grade, then you would walk up to get up to the retail space. Um, if, you know, when you're coming straight in that door, straight up those stairs is going up to the retail space. The stairs to the right of those actually go down into the garage level. And then you have the elevator to the right of that. So yeah. the way that, that Heather, the way that I looked at this, and please, everyone, correct me if I'm wrong. So that door is at about 104 foot elevation. And then, um, Julie, if you go to the next or the, the elevation drawing, I think, right, the, the elevation of the next floor up is what? I can't read that small, but right, it, at least eight, right, at least eight feet up. So the bottom of the window would be eight to nine feet above the sidewalk grade. It looks like 112. Yeah, so, yeah. And I guess I'm, I'm appreciating the challenge and fitting everything in, but I'm also not seeing that as being consistent with the design guideline, guidelines around fenestration of, of having it you know, be, be be pleasant from the streetscape and kind of visibly accessible into into the retail area. And, and finding that challenging is something that would be adding to the streetscape there along. And I guess I would back up with Pam. I'd, I'd really ask you to do any, you know, be a little bit more creative about what you might be able to do with landscaping. I don't know if you can add another street tree. This is a second quick comment, but the, the open space that you're proposing for the roof is great for the tenants, but that's not public open space, and we'll be we'll be losing a lot of greenery in the in the town square there. And so, anything else that we can do to add back to that is another second primary comment I have. You know, one thing, um, if, so if you want to go back to the front elevation again, um, we we did have a conversation with Historic um, about trying to activate that blank brick wall below those those retail windows, and that's the space we discussed doing. You know, some sort of a uh, display window or something that, that gives you the history of the of the building. Um, so trying to you know do something other than just a brick wall there. Uh, it's a potential way to address address that concern of, of a blank facade. It's just going to become the uh, the Walgreens storefront. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm envisioning that. The Walgreens so store. Can you kind of explain what what that means? Sure. Um, so Walgreens has their kit of parts. They put in their, their pharmacy. And rather than use all of the beautiful storefront that they built, they, uh, they put sort of like a diorama in front of it, you know. They just okay. covered all the windows and butted up all their shelves to it. So they really didn't take, take advantage of it. It was just a dead window. Mm -hmm. okay. Which is what that room would be, too, behind that window that is at 
sidewalk level, right? That's just an entrance room. The elevator. Where where you're waiting for the you know the elevator lobby. Yeah, to um, the right of the entry is, is just yeah, the elevator lobby. Yeah. Correct. I guess you know, not to, to, to dodge around the issue here. I, I mean, I look at this and the one, the primary area that I, or waiver that you're asking for that I just don't see being able to grant is the uh, 50 is the, the height, um, right? You're at 57 or 58, I think. Um, and then on top of that, the elevator shaft, which you know is is barely set set back, um, and and depending on which way you're looking at it, right? That's a that ends up being a 67 foot um, a 67 foot building. I, I, I'm nowhere near. I'm not even on the same planet as you of what's acceptable for that site in terms of uh, the the building. You got to come down to three floors. I, I, I have a hard time seeing that much density and that much height in that location. Um, and, and on top of that, you know, the one foot setbacks, you know, aren't even Not sort even of breaking up the, yeah, breaking up the, the massing of it. Um, I, it's just, it's a, a far cry. I know from what I had, um, in mind when when developing the the design guidelines and I think others so um, you know I, I to me I think that's the biggest issue right um, that that we need to to get across I I'm sure that others have some of those same thoughts I have a I have a bunch of comments I'd like to work through sure if, well Heather are you finished I'm sorry they yeah no go work. ahead go ahead Okay, so let's let's go from easiest to hardest, I guess. Um, I do appreciate how much time you've put into this, by the way. It's it's fairly well developed. We're not on the same page as John said, but I, I think you know it's a it's a start. So let's look at the um, again easiest to hardest. Or let's look at the first floor and that lobby, which doesn't work at all. Um, there's just there's just not enough space in that lobby to make that work. I, I think the recess door is killing you, you know, and again, this is, you can't turn stuff in just to get it into the elevator, right? So you're moving in a big piece of furniture. You can't even get in there. There's less depth, like at the bottom of the stair than there is stair width. And I think that's a code issue, but, but that lobby is, is not working. So that's the beginning and that's the entrance to your building. Um, yeah, so that, that recess door is just pinching in there. There's not enough room. Like I said, I don't think there's enough room in front of the elevator to turn. Uh, can you turn a stretcher, you know, if you have to get a stretcher in that elevator, right? As your only elevator, that's going to have to work that way. Um, there could be issues with this being a, a public entrance like this, you know, the, the residential entrance and whatever that retail place is, um, if it's food service, I'm not sure the residents are going to like that kind of traffic that might have to come in and out of there. So that's that's one of the reasons why we always we ask to separate the two residential from commercial. Um, so so maybe there's a way around that. Again, these are like the small issues. So let's look at that front elevation again. Um, yeah, the biggest issue with the front elevation, aside from the height, is that you don't have anything active at, at street level, right? That you've got this big blank wall and the windows are up high, so you won't see in. I'm not sure if there's a solution to that without removing those two parking spaces and bringing that commercial space down. But um, another issue here is the stucco, which is absolutely not allowed. It wouldn't be permitted. You'd need to do some kind of a, a, a man-made stone potentially from the bait, from the grade all the way up to where you're showing stucco and turn the corner with it, right? That's what pretty much all of the other developments are doing. They're doing some kind of a stone. You can do a cast stone, you can do an Aris craft or something, but from grade to that, that first, that 124 level, you're looking at something much more refined than stone. And I think brick is too small of a scale, right, to work properly. 
when you look at the side elevation as you turn that corner, you've got the right um, length. That would be the same material all the way down to grade. That's the other one, A2.1. No, yeah, that's the one right there. Yeah, so pan to the, there you go. Yeah, so where you're showing the extensive stucco, if you brought that down to grade and made it the same material as the other one, I think you're, you've are you got a much more refined looking building. So those are the two simple ones. If you look at the rear elevation, you have a zero clearance, I believe, between the garage, that automotive use and your building. I don't know how you're gonna put in a brick application. You're gonna do, you have to do some kind of a blind installation or maybe a precast panel from grade all the way up to that first floor because you don't have any room to install anything there. You're right up against that building. And I think the same thing applies uh, on the south. I don't know how much space you have to do. I think is this siding that you're proposing? Yeah, so we the, showed a uh, clapboard on that side. Yeah, so there's some consideration for what happens. That one's hidden, so I don't really, they're both hidden actually. So I don't really care but it's got to be okay. some kind of a durable material, but it's an installation issue there. Sure, sure. Okay, so um, let me see. So let's start working on some of the more difficult ones because the building massing is directly related to the issue of the number of units. Your density is way too high, I mean, higher than anything we've ever come close to approving. And I think that that's what's driving this, <clears throat> excuse me, this problem. Usually, and we've had these discussions before, uh, and Pam, when you were on the other side of this, you remember we would tell you that, we would say that, well, you know, the site has its limits. And so we say you need this much parking. And so you can only build so many units because you can only get so much parking. And now you've you've come up with a creative solution with the stackable parking. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. It's actually a, a smart solution, potentially for another site, especially. But this site is too small, I think, to mitigate the impact of being able to fit all these units in because you came up with a parking solution, right? So you're you're not doing any of the of the step backs and the massing tools that we built in to alleviate the massing issues because you don't have any room to do that because you've got to pack in these units, and so using the parking as a as a creative solution and then saying, well. We have all of these affordable units too. Frankly, the extra affordable unit doesn't do anything for our number, right? It's nice. I'm not saying we shouldn't have that and we shouldn't have workforce, but to use that as the, as the um, not the excuse, but as the reason for the alleviating some of the, the things you're supposed to do, like breaking up this building mass. Um, I, don't, I don't think that this site can remedy that problem, right? And you can see it because it's just this big box. And you start doing some creative things in there, but there's just not enough relief, I don't think, especially on that south side. Um, the roof deck, as uh, was it Heather that said that that's a nice amenity for the users, but you know that having that up there means you have to bring the elevator and the stairs up there, right? And so now we've added the elevator plus the clear height above the elevator, and so that's why we're up at 69 feet. If we don't have that roof deck, those stairs don't have to go up there. Maybe the back one has to go up there by code, I think, but the front one wouldn't have to. And so, you know, we're knocking off, uh, you know, 15, 15 feet just by doing that. So, so that's a question about whether that roof deck should be there um, because uh, because of the visual impacts and if there's noise issues for sure. You know, if that stuff gets activated, but I think the bigger thing is that. Um, the, the solution you found to the parking is increasing the unit count and the unit count is making the building massive and not it's not giving you the opportunity to break it up enough to deal with the small site. So if we took out five units, I don't know if this is the right number, I'm just saying, let's say we take out five units, we could probably make that back corridor dance in and out if we had to, or we could put more balconies in on the front side and start breaking that up. Or we could have a 10 foot step back on that front elevation, you know, mm -hmm. those kind of solutions. So I think I think that's the problem. Again, on, on a different site, potentially those solutions are great. Um, just looking at my notes here. As far as the loading zone goes, you know, if we're gonna, um, if we're gonna maintain the parking on Chapin Street, then you won't have any place to park 
a truck that's doing the movements. And really that's the biggest thing, right? For these kind of buildings, somebody's moving in, somebody's moving out at least once a month, right? So there's a truck parked somewhere. So we, we have to figure that out, whether we have to figure that out. Um, Cast okay, stone, we talked about that. Constructability. What's the, does the commercial square footage meet the minimum square footage that we asked for in our zone? Did we revise that recently? Or was that our talk about South Main Street? That was South Main Street where we talked about that. I'll check the zoning right now for this. Okay. Do you know the answer? I don't. But I'm just thinking that, um, you know, it's, it's too bad that those two parking spaces are sort of bumping up the front height because it, it'd be interesting to have a two level commercial space potentially, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if you brought that front part of the commercial space down to the street, like that first window bay that you're seeing there. So that's at the street level, that's great. You could potentially come in there, uh, maybe have a lift or something, or maybe the elevator can go up to it. But, and, you know, so two levels is kind of a nice to have a high base space. You could put the historic stuff behind that. The only limit on commercial I can see in the bylaw is 50% of the right. GFA, so I can't pull it up now. Um, can be commercial, which of course they're nowhere near. Um, yeah, um, and you know, if if the if I were looking at this building and, and you knock off that top floor, then you could say, okay, well, we could do a smaller commercial space because you know we only have so many residential units and have to make it viable somehow. So, so that's one of the things I'd be willing to re to give up a little if the rest of it was working. I think I think that's everything. I mean. Other stuff is just like picky little architectural stuff. But again, I appreciate the time you put into this. I just, um, I think that there's a, the, the big issue is that unit count, that density that's creating this building. It's just causing some issues. That's all I have for now, John. Right. Thank you, Nick. Um, others with comments, um, so Nick grabbed kind of my two most salient points, I think. Um, my first was the roof deck, which just feels extraneous in a relatively leafy suburb. You know, those type of roof decks are typically for folks that are a little bit more uh, city constrained, um, who don't have anywhere to, to spread out. Um, and so to me, the, the roof deck just seems like an, an easy way to reduce the, the overwhelming height. And I have the same reaction that, you know, that that elevator shaft right at the front um, just increases the, the size of the building um, so much from all angles um, in, in the diagram there. And then I, you know, just want to reiterate the same point. And what I kept thinking was, you know, in combination with Pamela's point that uh, the charm of that site right now is that little front courtyard with the um, with the trees. And then I look and I say, well, you know, I'm also someone that believes that uh, retail needs to be um, at the um, at the edge of, of the sidewalk in order to to be activated. But if the retail is not actually on the sidewalk, then um, there's no need to have it be all the way up there. So if you are going to set it back and have it be at the second level, then you could do something like with the comically speaking, a few stores, um, you know, uh, blocks up where it's, you know, the, the second story is part of it, but then you do that in a set back way. So you don't lose some of the charm of that, um, of that front courtyard. So in some ways, you know, I, I do see it as an either or that we either have the retail on the sidewalk where it's fully part of the streetscape and fully activated, or you don't and you set it back 
and kind of retain some of um, some of the suburban feel to that that lot as it is right now. But kind of this, the current solution is neither of those, right. um, and and kind of takes takes nothing of of the advantages of it. Um, so those are my kind of two comments. You know, I do want to um, provide praise for the innovative parking solution. Um, that is a very, you know, a, a great use of space that I think um, others should look into. Um, and so I thank you for kind of bringing it to our attention. Um, but again, as I said, and I know John and I go into this a little bit further, but, you know, my strong feeling is that you can't have retail like there's just something about how people shop that if they don't have a parking spot that's really close to the front of that um, store, they're not going to go there. You know, I think that there are there's there's multiple examples of that in town. Um, and, you know, I want more activated retail, but I don't want to create more um, challenges for people to actually use it and to create more failed retail opportunities. Right. Um, to, to have something be another empty storefront. So those are my kind of main three points. And then, you know, I will defer to Nick, but um, I was not a fan of that top level um, architectural feature with the looks like tiling up at the top there. I just don't think that that um, fits the, the tone of the town. You know, I think that the, the current building that is, um, on its way to being inhabited right now has a nice feeling to it. So it, so it actually looks like it's been there forever now. And that's something that this town truly appreciates. Um, and there's something about that tiled, um, I think you call it hardy. Uh, hardy board. Yeah, the hardy board that I, I, there's just something that that does not fit. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, kind of a traditionalist in in the in, in most architectural senses so take that into account as i say it yeah i don't think that the joints are as articulated as that when it's executed unless they do some sort of an accent to it it just seems uh, like it's going to be the overwhelming feature is it's just going to look like this big checkerboard mm -hmm. i want to say um uh, 30 haven is using this 30 Haven being which one again? Uh, the, the old Atlantic building in downtown. But um, that doesn't have a, an overwhelming sense of like tiles. The way that this looks, you know, is drawn here and then the, the sample, it looks much smaller than that. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll look right now. Hey, this is uh, Severio here, the, the applicant. Um, the those panels are actually the Hardy reveals. It's actually the same system that's on the 457 or 467 Main Street building, that majority set on the corner green. So it's actually the same exact product. I, I think it's just not articulated uh, in a way that that leads you to believe it's the same product, but it is actually the same product that they used right uh, a couple doors down. Just so you're aware. I'm looking at 30 oh, Haven you. right now, and I understand it I better. I think maybe just the. The way it looks kind of white on there, I get a Miami feel to it. So Yeah, there's there's no way to <laughs> yeah. unfortunately this is the, yeah. the downside of architectural construction drawing sometimes is that they yeah. just they're there to sort of convey some information to con contractors, not this is not a rendering. Understood. Um I I too would like to compliment you on on your you know the innovation and, and idea of using the the city lift. I think that's a that's a great idea. Um, I I do think that um, that there are still some issues um, that need to sort of be worked out with um, with parking um, and and loading. Um, aside from you know what we talked about before with the with the retails parking for the retail space, but parking. Within the building, you know, I, I'm a. Um, w this board has always been somewhat hesitant of, um, of you know, aisle widths that are too narrow, um, turning radiuses that don't quite work, um, and, you know, because each one of those, um, those things, um, you know, if it's hard to park, then 
then even the residents aren't going to park there, right? They're going to they're going to only park there in the at night when they have to, um, and then that makes it makes those people park on the street and then create more, uh, you know, during the day and create more um, more parking issues. Um, and so, you know, with your twenty, what is it, twenty one foot or twenty foot um, aisle width um, within the parking for those last two spots? I don't know. Um, Julie, if you can, you can scroll down to that. Um, um, you know, I, I'll just say that's a bit of a concern, right? I think there's some other things that you're gonna, you, you're gonna have to work on. So I'm not gonna, right, we're not uh, gonna think that we're gonna solve that right now, but um, yeah. And, and so the other thing is right now, oh, it's a 20 foot four inch. I guess what I don't understand, because I haven't seen it yet, but right there are two lines there um, uh, um, in the front part of the the city lift sort of footprint there. Um, and there's a, a let's call it a, a right under the word opportunity. Right? There's like a little box right with an X um, that juts out even a little further. Um, and then there's a line right up, a, yeah, right, really under the word opportunity that runs the, the distance. What is that? And, and I guess where I'm, where I'm headed is, is it truly 20 foot, um, four inches? Or did we just lose another, you know, six, nine, 12 inches there with whatever that is? Any, any intel on that at this point? Hi, this is Aaron with Alameda Major. I, I'm not 100% certain. Uh, C Lift had sent us over that CAD file. I could kind of look at their layers and okay. that and try to figure that out. Uh, it could it could be just a dimension line that 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 got referenced in, but I, I can't give you uh, an exact answer right now. But that's fine. That's fine. I just wanted to like highlight right right. We're looking at right. You're squeezing a lot of stuff in here, so making yeah. sure that when you say 24 20 foot four inches that yeah, is that really a 20, 20 foot four inch usable aisle? Um, and then, right, it sort of it goes along with that is this uh, this eight foot space, um, which is is fine. I, I from my perspective, you know, we have um, we have okayed in you know some smaller spaces, whether it's eight feet, you know, and not necessarily always eight five. Um, but to me, this space, and we've we've talked about this in, in other issue, uh, other locations, um, other developments, right? You park in there, and then how on earth do you get back out? Um, you know, you, you're either backing all the way out. Um, a twenty a twenty foot aisle is is pretty tough to do that maneuver. Um, um, you know, a three point or a probably in this case it would be like a um, nine or 10 point turn to get out of there, depending on what kind, what size car you're, you're using. So, so to me, you know, the, the, the city, the, um, the city lift is great. Um, sort of fitting these other, you know, two spots plus the handicap spot in here, um, or I guess it's three spots plus the handicap starts to get a little bit um, tough. Um, and, and it, right, it all goes back to right. What, what Nick said is, you know, just, there's a lot, there's a lot being, um, uh, that we're trying to fit into this, to this small space that. Yeah, John, I think looking work. at the, looking at that system, that's, um, there's a gate that looks like that comes down and, um, it sits outboard of the columns that support the upper rack, if that's what's happening. And so you're right that. You're you're actually not at twenty foot two inches clear. Yeah, and especially if there's a gate, right? And then you don't even have that that um that overhang that you can sometimes use if it's if it's a curb or or something like that. So, um, you know, the last thing you want to do is is um, design something that people can't can't use. So actually, so do you think that you're actually you're clear spanning this? Is that the proposal to clear span this um, this garage structurally? Yeah, yeah, that's our proposal. Okay. 
You got some pretty deep beams in there. Yeah, no, you should be able to do it. It's only about yeah. 40 feet or so, but that's that, that's good. You eliminate the columns, yeah. which, you know. Yeah, we, we tried to squeeze as much, you know, or get as much out of it as we could, so we took the columns out. Yep. Um, and then and then certainly the the loading and the the use of you know the sidewalk or or what goes on here um, on this in this area um, along Chapin is you know it's got to be a little bit better better developed. I, I don't think that's right. As you mentioned, right? It, it, the, the proposal is to continue to do what is do the um, happening now. Um, I'm not so sure. I mean, as a first thought, I'm not sure that's that works. Um, you know, when you have 19 units here, you know, how many more people re really wanting to use those, those spaces, I don't know. And, and then on top of it, um, loading. So I, I think that that piece of this needs to be a little bit further refined, how that works. And, and also what's the What's the uh, vertical clearance into this garage? Do you? The, uh, the, side, the height of the garage for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that I gotta check. All right. Give me a second, I'll look it up. I think we did eight foot doors, I think they did Right, because at a minimum, I'll just say, you know, whether you get that back to us now or or or, or later, you know, at a minimum, right, with a van with a handicap van space in there, you you want to be able to, you know, be able to clear a typical handicap van, right, which yeah, is, is which is higher is than the you know seven feet that you typically use, you know, you, that's up around nine, 10 feet, you probably have that clearance, but- um, We have 10 foot. Yeah. The door is 10 foot. All right. Um, but it certainly, right, it, not a space that you can you can use for loading. So yeah, I don't know, it's just a lot of stuff trying to happen in this small space. Um, other Comments, thoughts from the board. Uh, um, no. And I can open it up. Are you, you all good with that? Yes. All right. Um, so I'd like to open this up to um, any comments um, from uh, from the public as. Um, Julie said, if you can raise your hand um, virtually or or, um, or actually physically, um, and we'll try and we'll try and call on you um, that way. Um, John Weston, John Barnes has a has his hand raised. All right, go Is ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm Jonathan Barnes from the, um, I'm here tonight uh, from the Historical Commission. I'm the chair of the Historical Commission. Um, good to see everybody. Good to see the, um, the applicant and his team. We saw them, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago um, for our meeting. Um, so just a couple of points um, to bring to your attention. One, which has already been mentioned, this, this is a historical building on the inventory. So it will require a, uh, a public hearing before the historical commission. Uh, that I don't know when that that will occur, but I just want to bring that to everybody's attention. Um, to I had talked about this before with respect to uh, the Gould Street project, and actually with respect to Postmark, bo both of which, like this, were in the downtown Smart Growth District, and similar to those, um, it is adjacent to uh, a residential uh, neighborhood. Uh, that is a residential neighborhood uh, along Chapin uh, over on the other side on Green and behind it. it. There are homes on the historical inventory in that area. And as I pointed out in the other uh, projects, uh, regardless um, of, of being on the inventory, that is a long standing historical with a small age um, neighborhood. Um, 
And I, I know that uh, when you developed the design guidelines, uh, you limited the, the impacts to an abutting property when it's, when it's at a border of a residential neighborhood. Uh, and I, I know that I had, had uh, advocated that the language in the downtown smart growth district design guidelines refer to being adjacent to a residential neighborhood. And I would ask you again to reconsider that. Uh, this is a perfect example of why. Um, th those are all homes behind it, uh, directly behind it, which, which renders it not exactly adjacent to a residential neighborhood. It's an auto body uh, building. It's a one story building. Uh, and other than that, that's a residential neighborhood behind it. Uh, picking up on uh, Nick's points, um, the, the guidelines uh, require step backs uh, and in a neighborhood or when it abuts a residential neighborhood, they actually require step backs, I, I believe on the second floor and on the fourth floor. I know that doesn't exactly fit here because it technically isn't uh, abutting a, a residential neighborhood, but it has the same effect. And um, I just want to piggyback, I guess, on a Nick's comments, uh, that particularly with respect to that, that eastern elevation that does um, abut the residential neighborhood. I would uh, respectfully request that more, more be done to break up uh, that, that, uh, that back elevation or that east elevation. Um, and I would like to actually see more of a step back there. Um, second, on the western elevation, just want to address that. Um, that's the front on, on Main Street. We talked about that as well. In fact, we, that was discussed at the DRT meeting. Um, I questioned why, why those, uh, those windows are up that high when it was pointed out that that is the garage behind it. Actually, I, I had suggested uh, that that brick front there be, be open and be made, if, if that's going to be the design, uh, that be made a, a window area that the windows go all the way down to the street level. Um, and that that area be cut out as a window display or as a, a diorama, I, I described it for, um, for historical artifacts or historical narrative or historical presentation. Um, you raise a valid concern about, about Walgreens, um, but I would suggest that if it does go in that direction, uh, I, I, I believe they were receptive to a historical display in that area. And I would think that uh, that you could condition your, uh, your decision uh, on that being retained so that it would be a requirement. Um, and that would, I, I assume, get around the, the problem that you have in Walgreens. Um, but I do want to point out that at, at our historical commission meeting, which was just an informal meeting, uh, there was discussion by other members of the historical commission uh, advocating very strongly, similar to what many of you said, uh, that um, it ought to be a streetscape friendly, more streetscape friendly presentation uh, on that main street. And in fact, it was suggested what, what some of you might have suggested here that uh, they forego those two parking spaces directly behind it and drop that, uh, that window down to the street level. Um, I, that's actually a better idea. Uh, obviously it's gonna present some problems for the applicant, but um, from the standpoint of the design, uh, and its presentation to the street, that's a, that's a far better alternative. And I, I support that as well. Um, I would want to at least congratulate the applicant. Uh, their, their design does include a lot of historic elements uh, that would probably include the stucco, probably include some of the brickwork. And in fact, the, uh, the hardy board design, I believe, uh, but mostly the stucco was a, a nod to the, to the current uh, historic uh, elements. And I believe they also are uh, proposing to include uh, some photographs, some front page uh, prints and some history about uh, the Chronicle, um, which I, I applaud as well. Uh, those are my comments. Thank you. I just Thank comment you, that, uh, I'll just add that uh, asbestos is historic too, but um, we're probably not using that. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't suggesting that nor they, but thanks. Nick. Well put. Um, any, anyone else comments? I don't see any other hands raised at this time. Um, Jill's just popped up. Mine's it's Susan. Susan. Yep. Jill Mayberry and then a woman named Susan. All right. Uh, Jill, why don't we, um, you want to unmute and ask your question? Hi, Jill Mayberry, 16 Chapin Avenue. Um, I 
do want to mention that Neil McQuish, the owner of the Reading Square Auto Body, had a family emergency tonight, so he could not attend. Um, he's very concerned. Um, two of his concerns that he mentioned to me this evening was um, he's, he was talking about, about the footing that is going to be needed and coming close to his, his building, how are they going to fit it with the alleyway between his building and the um, development is two feet. So he was concerned about that. And then he's also concerned about um, all the, uh, the work trucks and, and everything because the space is so small, it's gonna require probably shutting down the street and where are all these construction trucks going to go. Um, I'm sure he'll be with us in the future. Um, some of the um, items that I wanted to bring up were um, the building has not been vacant for several years. Um, there were office personnel in there up to a year and a half ago. Um, and people would go in and out of that office building um, to pick up papers. I was in there several times, so I just wanted to correct that. Um, I think we all know that the lot that we're talking about over by Christopher's and the bank is always full and you always need to run around town to look for a spot. Um, I was concerned about the decks on top, um, the noise level um, of people up there and also the noise level of the machinery on the roof um, for the cityscape parking. Um, I was, I, I guess it's under um, the ruling for the um, amount of parking spaces, but um, I think most people have two cars these days. So of course, as I was concerned about the parking when we put up on um, 14 Shape and Ave right next door to me, um, you all know already that it's very congested in our neighborhood. Um, we have businesses parking on that street is parking only on one side. And um, where is all the extra parking and visitor parking going to go, as well as during the day for all the people who are already parking. And then we have a very busy business across the street with the Mission of Deeds. There are U-Hauls going in and out of there all day long. So, you know, we, we didn't mention anything about Mission of Deeds tonight. Um, one of the neighbors, um, was asking about where the gas meters are going to be located. Um, are they on the outside of the building on Chapin Ave? Are they one meter per unit or are they one, or is it one full meter? And um, of course we're mostly concerned about the congestion and the height of the building just Definitely not on the same page for that. And I think that's everything for now from me, because I'll be on board. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I think that uh, most of those questions, right, will probably uh, get addressed as as refinements come in. Um, uh, and as I mentioned, you know, you got you bring a good point um, that we didn't talk about the mission deeds and making sure that all the turning movements um, sort of work um, for both for both this development and and for them. Um, do, um, thoughts about comments about the um, about uh, gas meters? How, how would that work here? Is that something you need to come back to? I think so, Aaron, did you, okay. um, I don't know if Aaron indicated on his plan that where the gas line's coming in, uh, but I think we probably need to review that with the engineers. Okay. I, the gas does keep, come in off Chapin. That's where the existing service line is. So that's where, where the line was gonna come in. I mean, I'm not certain. I don't believe in, uh, Rob, you could correct me but I don't believe the MEPs got that far. If the, the meters would be on the exterior or, or not there. Um, 
But uh, yeah, yeah, I, don't, I, I have to go back and look at my notes. But yeah, um, yeah we'll we'll address this. All right, that's fine. I, and can I add something? I think the fire department has some specific requirements about that. So that's really, that's an interesting comment because that gas line comes in, you know, like right under the commercial space, pretty much. It would, if they're on the inside, it's going to pinch those two spaces that are up in that west end. And if they're on the outside and they're, you know, a bunch of separate meters, it's going to look like, you know, Singapore with those air conditioners mounted to the side of every building. So that's that's something you're going to have to take into consideration whether you need to build an alcove for them if they're outside or if they go inside, how they impact space, clear space in that garage. Well, right now, isn't the building pretty much filling up the envelope of the lot? So any outside meters would actually extend into the public way? All right, that's why I said they'd have to build an alcove. Oh, so they'd have to push the building wall in and put the meters into there. I, I think so, but let's let them, I, I, what, my point was just not to let that go too long. It sounds like a detailed design issue, but it really isn't because there's some impacts there. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you, Jill. Um, right there was someone else, Julie? Yeah, there's a participant named Susan. Um, her hand just got lowered, I guess. Um, Nope, no, it's up again, okay. All right, so, <laughs> go ahead, Susan, if you wanna unmute and ask a question. Hi, my name is Susan True. I'm at uh, 22 Chapin Ave. Uh, as you're aware that the project at 14 Chapin has been ongoing for about 25 months. So we've been under siege by construction. Um, the construction trucks have basically ruined Ordway Terrace, which is a private way, which we paid to have paved. It's destroyed. They park there all the time. Um, they shut our roads down without any notice to us. We had our water shut off without any notice to us. What kind of reassurances can we have that this will not continue if this project goes through? Um, Julie, you want to take sort of the the. I, I I can't comment at all about what you know what is happening with that 14 Chapin um, and their use of that private road. Um, but I do know the town does does put some, um, you know, there's a process and put some restrictions uh, in place, right? I, just like everything, sometimes things work well, sometimes uh, there's some, some hiccups um, and sometimes there's more than hiccups, but Julie, you wanna? Sure, yeah, I can comment. Um, we always have a pre-construction meeting with applicants before they you know, start construction of their project. And we talk about things like where contractors are gonna park, where mater materials are gonna be staged, what the construction hours are, um, how they're gonna mitigate dust and debris from getting onto neighboring properties and getting in the right of way. We, this is the first I'm hearing um, that the, con the contractors are parking on Ordway and that's something we can look into now that we've, we've heard about it. Um, we do typically recommend specific locations for contractors to park in. And sometimes I think that um, that recommendation might get lost in translation as new contractors come to the site. And, you know, if they have things that aren't really necessarily feasible to park a quarter mile away. Um, but we can circle back with that developer. I actually was emailing with him just today. Um, and just talk to him about that and remind him that he needs to have his contractors park in different locations um, and be more mindful and respectful of the residents in the area and the residents on Ordway. So. Thank you, Susan. Um, other questions, comments at this point? All right, um, unless there's any other comments from the board, um, I think that we have um, provided some um, thoughts probably for you and some feedback, um, a couple of things there to, um, to address um, some of the really acceptability or, or um, lack thereof of some of the um, requested waivers. Um, 
Any John, can I ask a, a question? Sure. What is causing the uh, lifting of the first or uh, level one higher than the street level? Is it actually the parking spaces under the front of the building or is it the city lift system? Rob, can you address that? Yeah, um, it's, sorry, I have the, the wrong button. Yeah, it's 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 mainly driven by uh, the uh, the city list system has a twelve foot six inch clearance to it, so that is pushing us up higher. Uh, but even without it, we're we're still above the we'd still be above the street level. So essentially, oh, so sorry, the back ahead. parking is still fine. It's just the front parking that puts it up. Um. No, so the city lift system um, has a 12 foot six inch clearance. Um, if we didn't have the city lift system, we would still we would only eight foot four inch clearance. So there there is a difference between the two, um, but that's across the entire plane of the garage. Does that does that make sense? Assuming that the entire lower floor is used as a garage, correct? Yeah. But it would but it would be lower. By four if, feet without the city lift system yes. without the city lift system right. um so with the city lift system do you, you said you you it's a 12 foot clearance i assume right is there uh is there a couple of feet i mean it goes both up and down right it's a it's you have three stacked cars right and mm -hmm. so I'm assuming, right? You have the first, the first car, and then how far down do you go? Just, I'm just curious. Um, don't know the exact dimension of that. Aaron, do you remember how how far down it goes? I'm I'm not certain. Um, we 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 can provide. City Lift did provide us a a, a detailed package. Um, we can we can provide that with part of our submission. Okay. I guess I have one more comment then if, since we're talking about parking. I know the code only requires you to provide one handicapped parking space, but I think you're going to need to be able to make an accommodation if you need more than one. And so the, the non-city lift parking spaces, you're going to need to be able to convert to more handicapped parking. Um, I, I, just, I just don't see how, um, you know, if you're over 10 units that the potential for having for needing two spaces wouldn't be something in the future, especially given the type of housing you're proposing. And then getting to Tony's question, Tony was asking if you know the the big blank wall in the front is there because of parking spaces actually not just the city lift system, but because the parking place is right up there up front, right? You know, there are there there are two more places right up there up front. Those are the handicap spaces. Am I or there's a handicap space up there? Is that what's causing it? And there's two parking spaces at the front um, yeah. along Main Street, but those are not handicapped. Okay. The handicap space. Oh, I see where the handicap one is. Oh, took you to see. I yeah. See yep. Thank you. I got it on my other screen. And I think a, a lot of stuff hinges on those two spaces because if you get rid of those and drop that front to street level and reduce your unit count, um, you, know, you can pretty much keep the whole city lift system. You might, you know, you'd have, you'd have a much more active space. I mean, Rachel's point was dead on. If, if you're not activating that street front, then there's no reason to be at the zero lot line. Yeah. So drop it, dropping it, does a lot dropping that whole quadrant to the left of that um, column line I guess on your um, garage level plan so consider that all right so uh, any questions before we um, we move along John, if you don't mind, this is Severio. I'd love to just sure. kind of close this out with a couple of comments. Um, sure. 
know, first and foremost, thank you so much for all the commentary. I have to say, uh, it's it's uh, as funny as this might sound, it's a pleasure um, coming in front of this board in particular because you guys are always very uh, productive and helpful in the process. Um, so it's always uh, it's always a much more enjoyable process, of course, <laughs> and uh, it's a much more collaborative process. So it, it is much appreciated in all the comments, the feedback and the detailed notes are uh, wonderful. I don't think there's um, anything necessarily here tonight that uh, we are surprised about for sure. Um, you know, the challenge here was that of course, as you guys can see, it's a super, super challenging site. You know, it's narrow. We've got all kinds of grading challenges, utility issues, uh, circulation and everything else. So we tried to propose something that um, we, you know, I guess what I, would, what I would want everyone to leave with realizing tonight is that we were hoping to try to maximize the public benefit as best possible. And um, in doing so, I know that uh, you know, there's some uh, some things that we still need to work on, and we're certainly going to go back to the drawing board and adjust. But uh, you know, I do want everyone to know that um, you know, in, in adding the height, it doesn't it's not lost on us that it is a tall building, and that um, there are, there are definitely going to be some concerns there. Uh, but the idea was, do we approach this thing and try to um, you know uh, provide a, a maybe a project that's a slightly smaller scale, but maybe doesn't provide as much public benefit in terms of affordability and, and things like that. So, um, you know, thank you so much for the feedback tonight. And we're certainly going to take it back and, uh, and see how we can, we can rework this thing. The only thing I would ask is uh, if we were to, let's say, lower that front retail space, of course, we're going to lose some, some parking in the front and that would affect our ability to deliver, to deliver as many uh, affordable units and meet that guideline. And maybe we have to reduce the density dramatically. Um, I guess what I'm wondering is, uh, is there a way in which we could work collaboratively so that we can still give the town some affordable units? Because, uh, you know, at least in my, in my view, I would love to be able to still do that. Um, I know that at 12 units, we really don't have to provide uh, that affordability component, but I would love to find a way to do that for the town, even though I know Nikki said it's not a, not a huge um, impact to the count overall. Uh, you know, if, if we can do anything to, to, I guess, provide a project that is beneficial in that, in that sense, at least, um, you know, we'd love to do that. So any feedback you could provide uh, in that regard, or if there is, uh, I guess, a way to, to collaborate to, to, get the, to, to meet that ends, I suppose. Okay, well, um, yeah, I mean, I think certainly, right, we're, we're definitely interested in um, um, adding affordable units to town, right? But right, as you mentioned, there's a trade off. Um, and we need to sort of think, think that through of what that what that is, I think there's some things that, um, that we just can't trade off. Um, so um, I don't know if we can, you know, I, I will, right, as you mentioned, this board is definitely willing to, to, to work and try and get something that's the, that, that works for everyone. So we'll certainly continue to do that. Sounds good. Um, so Julie, um, do we, or, uh, I guess the, the development team, right? Our next meeting is, um, I'm going to say about a month from now. Um, I don't know if we want to, I, I don't know what our schedule looks like on that meeting, Julie, um, whether there's time or whether we need to schedule it, um, further out. I don't know if you, you, you all need more time than a month that you, you might you might want to do that anyhow. So, so um, if they think they can be ready to come back to you, we can probably accommodate it. We do have a number of things to be discussed that night, um, but and then a couple, like a couple of them, may or may not happen still. So it's a little in flux. Um, I guess I would defer to the development team to see if they think they would knowing that you know we'll need a couple weeks at the staff level to really provide good feedback on if the plans change dramatically um and that you know we could also accommodate and would want to accommodate another drt if the plans change dramatically so um you know i know you probably need to talk amongst yourselves before maybe before you know when you might come back but 
I think it's really up to the development team to, to let us know if they think they can be back on August 10th or not. Yeah, I think what we'll do is um, is just connect on all the all the great notes that we got tonight, and maybe by the end of this week, I can get back to you and just kind of circle back with where we're at and what kind of timeline we need based on everyone's availability and, and workload. So let's do this. Julie, does this make sense? We'll continue this um, hearing in where we, you know what? Damn it. Um, we didn't read the notice at the beginning of the meeting, right? <gasps> That's okay. Just do it now. All right. <laughs> yeah. We, Tony mentioned it a while to, ago to me and I forgot to bring it up. So. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I had it up and then you just started talking. So oh. I was like, all right, I guess I don't have to <laughs> <laughs> um, sh Julie, should I just read the whole thing here? Yeah. It's probably the easiest. Um, the hearing notice, the whole thing, or just the... I'm going to read the, the this is yeah the whole thing okay notice is hereby given that under mdl chapter 40a section 11 and section 10.11.23 of the reading zoning bylaw the community planning and development commission will hold a public hearing on monday july 2013 2020 at 7 30 p.m the remote and online measures to consider an application for plan approval under MGL Chapter 40R submitted by ACG Real Estate Reading LLC for the property located at 531 Main Street, Assessor's Map 17, Lot 162. I'm sure All that's right. not. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And so, with that being said, um, right, we want to continue this um, this hearing till August, some date in August. Ten. August 10th. Yeah, and you could probably say, um, actually, let me just ask Andrew really quick. The eight o'clock thing that is probably not happening, right, on the 10th? I believe not. Okay, so I would say eight o'clock. Okay. Did I hear a motion on that? Uh, motion to continue? Yeah. Second. All right. Um, so roll call for all those in favor, right? Uh, Nick? I think he's muted, but I think he said yes. Yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> Heather? Yes. Pam? Yes. Rachel? Yes. All right, and sorry, Tony, right? <laughs> Correct. Um, and so uh, if, if your team, you know, please be in touch with Julie. And if your team, you know, if, if it's evident that that isn't going to work for you, just, you, you know, let Julie know. And then at that meeting, we'll, we'll just continue it to whatever date works for you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Sure. I don't think you voted that last one. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes, for me. <laughs> Sorry. Not on my game tonight, obviously. So five zero. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Be in touch. Thanks. Um, so next item on the agenda, what do we have? Uh, I believe we'll quickly want to discuss the re-lot release at Anetta Lane. Um, which I think Julie might have some more info for. Yeah, uh, let me just stop my screen share real quick. Um, so the um, Lynetta Lane subdivision is, I believe a six lot subdivision off of Franklin Street. It was known as Barton Estates when it came before you a couple of years ago. It's, you might remember that it changed developers. Uh, was it back in December or in the fall? Oh, yeah. um, and, and there was a new covenant created, um, which we do. But we never intended for the covenant to re-encumber lots you'd already released. Um, and I don't know, Chris, Chris is still on. I think he's representing this project. Um, but that is, I guess, effectively what happened. So you did vote to release these lots um, back in 
Andrew, do you remember when? I could pull up the date. I have, yeah. So I guess really it's just a paperwork issue. Um, we were earlier in this pandemic authorized by John to just prepare a new lot release since it's really an administrative matter. Um, but I guess the, the bank would not accept it. They want you to vote and sign the document. So, um, Julie, do you want me to say something? <laughs> sure. Yeah, right. that'd be great. So I, I actually represent um, the first home buyer who bought a lot there. I, I represent the bank, Reading Cooperative Bank. And um, we bounced this by the title insurer and the title insurer is requiring that we, as a condition of this, um, that the seller has to get it. And so since I have worked with Julie in the town, I basically just composed it to make it, try to keep it simple and stupid. And so um, the problem is, is there was the one covenant and then the second covenant and the second covenant, uh, the title insurer says for it to be clear title that actually has to be released for this lot. So based upon that, the buyers bought, the lender lent, and basically it's all in expectation and hope that the town's gonna provide this release. All right. Um, questions from the board on that? No. So what we can do is, um, I believe it only requires like three of you technically to sign. Um, so after you do your roll call vote, you can pick three people um, and we all circulate a document. Um, we can figure out some way to do it either, you know. I propose SharePoint. Um, we, unfortunately, wet signatures are still required for things like this. Wow. That's not up to us, it's state law. Um, Registry of deeds. Yeah, and the rest should just do what we did before with the three of us who live close. Yeah. That's fine. That worked. Okay. And I'll help you coordinate after. In, All right. In the coming days. All right, great. Um, so we need a motion to sign, to release a lot or to sign the lot release. Oh. Right. Okay. So, motion to sign the lot release for Lynetta Lane. Do I hear a second? Second. All right. Um, roll call. Okay. I'll start with me. Yes. Uh, Nick. Yes. Heather. Yes. Pam. Yes. Rachel. Yes. All right. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the explaining. Because Thank I you. Yeah. Really remember the details. <laughs> yeah. We've done this before. And Julie and I a couple times. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. All right. Um, you do have a couple of things you should announce. Uh, continuances for John. Oh, yeah. Screen share for you. So they're up. Um, Thank you. On the, let me just. Can you see the agenda? I can. Yes. Okay. Let me just. So you could do those two that are on the screen. Sure. So at 745, we were scheduled to have a continued public hearing for a site plan review at 259, 267 Main Street, uh, Stonegate Construction Corporation. Um, this application was continued to August 10th at 7.30. Also at 8.15, we were scheduled to have a continued public hearing um, for a site plan review at 258, 262 Main Street, uh, Reading CRE Ventures LLC. Uh, that application um, was continued to um, August 10th at 8.15. Right. Let's see what else. Okay. These are the last. Um, 
I believe by charter each year you are required to vote to um, either maintain the status quo of the board organization or reorganize. So that's just something I put on the agenda. Sure. Um, yeah, so let's talk about that now. Um, so it's been sort of, I, I don't know if that's the, uh, well, I'll say it's been practice over the last, ever since I've been on the board is that the, um, the secretary um, becomes the next year's uh, chair. Um, if people, for those that were on the board, I think we actually may have um, nominated and, and voted Rachel as secretary um, uh, without, her, without her at the meeting, um, which was uh, okay, because we knew that it wasn't a heavy lift. Um, uh, however, I, I, I'm going to speak for Rachel. I, I don't think that, um, that she, um, can commit or wants to commit or can commit the time, um, uh, for being the, the chair. So, um, so I would encourage, right. That, that no one, <laughs> no one nominate Rachel as is standing, you know, our standing, uh, uh, approach. So with that, you know, I, um, I'll say. I, I would entertain nominations for anyone um, for either chair or secretary. Um, I, I'll say that I um, I would be willing to stay on. I'm, but if someone else wants to step in, I would be more more than happy um, uh, to give up the the chair and have someone else be chair um, as well. So. I guess, I, you know, so John, on the flip side of that, I think you've been doing a terrific job. So, um, you know, is this something that you'd be interested in continuing um, if we were to nominate you? I, I'll say I do think it is important to have different voices and different, um, you know, perspectives as chair for the, um, um, though, right, I think Nick ended up last time I think, right, Nick was, it, it was more than a year. I think it was, it might've been two. Um, it was at least a year and a half, I know. It was at least two and we were doing twice as many meetings. So I think you should have to stay on just because you've almost <laughs> done half as many meetings. And they've we been doing, short. We were doing twice as many meetings. Yes. Yeah. So minimum, 24 meeting minimum. Three more years for you, John. Three more years. So I don't mind I guess staying on. on. That Right. At that point, I feel like we're, this is only our second Zoom meeting. Yeah, so it's like this is only our second Zoom meeting and you did a good job with a really, really hard one last time. So um, it's our third? I think yep. it's not our third. Okay. Yep, it is. We've done this three times? No, we no. only had, no, just we had, two. no, we did it twice. No, it's just that we all spend so much life on Zoom now, it all blends together. <laughs> we had a really easy one in May with like a signed permit Oh, yeah, oh, you're right. right. <laughs> that other one just sticks in everyone's mind. Yeah, <laughs> that it does. It's, and so, I'm glad you didn't have you, that be first. Then you all would quit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so yeah, that, that probably would have been slightly easier. But, um, you know, so this is certainly something we're trying to figure out. And if, you know, I think that in this new environment, needs someone who has a little bit of experience um, in the role and so that's I think my my own thought process is that because of this new format um, it might be better to uh, not rock the boat at the moment but um, <laughs> others can disagree with me. I, I would like to chime in to agree with Rachel. That's actually, I mean, I'm, I'm still brand new here, um, but John, I think you've been doing a terrific job, especially as we transition to Zoom, especially during, you know, just the added things that come with running a town committee during a pandemic. I mean, there's this, so having, having experience with one thing, running CPD while we are all dealing with something global that we have no experience with, I think that's a nice pairing if you're willing to stay on. Um, but, if, but if others are, are interested in stepping up, I of course would probably be behind that too. I agree with that. So I'll nominate John Weston for chair. 
Second. Second. All right. So Thanks. I guess I, and then um, before we vote, um, uh, also we need a nomination for secretary. So I'm happy to nominate uh, uh, Pam. If uh, you Thank would you. like to come into a new role, given you know a, a year under your belt, if you yes, like I'll do that. Take <laughs> the secretary role. I would I'll be happy Pam. to. <laughs> I'll second that. Thank you. All right. So um, let's vote first on um, uh, Pam for um, for secretary. I'll say yay, Nick. Yay. Heather? Yay. Pam? Yes. Heather, Rachel? Yay. All right. And then um, uh, me, John, for uh, chair? I'll say yes. Nick? Yes. Heather? Yes. Pam? Yes. Rachel? Yes. All right. Okay. So a little bit of a reorganization there for you, right, Julie. Thanks. So, should we do minutes? We figured since this is not <laughs> midnight, we could get ahead on minutes. So we worked hard to get those ready for you guys. And um, I Nick provided comments, and Andrew's already incorporated them in. So I will pull them up. Um, let's see, should we start back at the beginning? Yeah. I right. will fully admit I did not have a chance to go through these All right. beforehand, so I apologize for that. Well, you guys are going to have to read them now while I take my break and refill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, you want to read them while they're on the screen, or do you want to read them to yourselves at home? I'll just leave them up. You can tell me when to. Start. I have mine pulled up on my uh, my other so, screen at home. Give the minutes from. Pay no attention to the title at the top. I have no idea why that happens. But these are the minutes from February, uh, was it February 10th? Yes, February 10th. Okay. Feels like 10 lifetimes ago. It doesn't. Julie, the title is based on the document settings in Word. If you go into the properties on the document, you can change them. I believe I tried that, and for some reason, it wouldn't let me change. <laughs> Oh, there was admin rights or something. I don't know. I could. They wouldn't let me do it. I'll make a note of that, Tony, and see if I can get it to work. So, why does it say school council? You okay. probably use that as the template to start. Uh, okay. If you want to send me a uh, Word document, I'll clean it up and give it back to you. Sounds great. Yeah, I can do that. Um. Andrew, are you going to make any edits right now on the fly? I cannot, no. Okay. Um, so I should. If that's okay. I can, I was going to write them down. I'll just do it on the fly. Can you guys still see the PDF that I had up? Yeah. Okay. Should I scroll down? Sure. Let me know when to keep scrolling.
Is anybody reading them on the screen or are you all reading them on your own screens? I'm reading my own them on screen. My screen. On screen. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Well, I, don't, I don't have any comments for February. Just felt like I can fill that. All right. If no one's yeah. got them on the screen, I'm going to stop the screen share. Andrew, there's two versions of 511 and 68 in the folder. Is that not like? by design or just by I thought I had removed the previous ones. Hmm, I only see one version. Let me refresh. That's weird. Oh, I haven't refreshed. I only see one set in mine, but they should yeah, be the one from three. I just refreshed. I just refreshed. It's, it's been open since this afternoon. So. Okay, no worries. Should be the ones from 350 this afternoon. Can um Uh, I'm back on the February 10th um, minutes. Yep. And so I don't know what page that is. Um, one, two, three. On the fourth page. Oh, I should look at the screen. Are you sharing? No. No, I. I okay. On the fourth page, the, the fourth page begins with Mr. Safina asked about the location of the retaining wall and transformer. Mm -hmm. That's the first line on the fourth page mm -hmm. that I have. But uh, one, two, three, on the fourth paragraph, it says in, itali in italics, Mr. Weston announced 2123 Village Street application has been withdrawn. That seems to be completely out of place. Oh. And I know why it was, I mean, I probably that came up at that point in the, in the discussion because it was, I did that at exactly whatever time that was supposed to, um, supposed to be at. Can we, can we add in, can we either move that to a different place in, or can we add in, you know, since it was, um, whatever time that was, 8.30. I mean, yeah. give some context of why that's <laughs> randomly in the middle of, a, of another discussion cool. of an application. I'll just, uh, I'll just move it down underneath the heading for it. Okay. okay. I think that's fine. We don't usually do that. Yeah. We don't usually do what? Interject those things. Are you transcribing we do it, from we recording do it in now? The meeting a lot. We don't usually record it in the minutes that way. I don't think. Yeah. So, so I was going to put it. Um, well, let me just see if I could. See. I think I'll just I'll just take it out and because we have something about about that later on in the minute in the minutes. Okay. Are we doing these in order? I'm I'm looking at another one. <laughs> what do you how do you want to do this? Well, I'm waiting for you guys to finish looking at February and and to give me any other comments and take a vote. In the February one, there's that section that's highlighted on the, I don't know, what's that, page five? What page, John? Page five. Yeah, I'm into there. Section was changed from 50 to 60 feet wide. Yep, straight section. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I meant to verify that it went, that it got bigger, not smaller. 
and then there, it's mentioned again down below. Next page. Honestly, I didn't remember which way we went with that, so I can look. I meant to look, I forgot. It was moved, the right of way was wider. They made it wider. They made it wider. Okay. 60 feet was is what is required, and they only had 50, and we wanted it to be compliant with the um, subdivision regulations. So the way that you have it written is correct. Okay. I'm just gonna look at the plans real quick. Not that I don't believe you. Just... You're right. No changes for the meeting on 210. Me neither. I have no changes. So just the ones that you've mentioned already. Correct. Okay. You want to make a motion? Uh, was it? Uh, Motion to accept meeting minutes for February 10th, 2020, as, as amended. Second. Um, all right, I'll vote. I'll start. Uh, yes for me. Nick? Yes. Heather? Yes. Pam? Yes. Rachel? Yes. Thank you. Do you want to move on to what was it? Was it March 9th? That was the next.
feels reading these minutes it feels like a different world back then doesn't it <laughs> and, yes yeah because this was all a great discussion and uh, um about you know the brewery or you know brewery options or those different things but we, had we, such are, a... we are in such a different place right yes, now <laughs> we are See, it's a good thing your chair to get us back to the, the good fun <laughs> <deep> discussions. We certainly really? wouldn't have envisioned the tent taking up all the parking spaces on Main Street. Nope. No. How's that working out, Julie? Any problems, any issues? Sorry, what was the question? Just wondering if there are any issues with the outdoor um, seating Dining. stuff. We're, we're yeah. doing. Is that a joke? No, yeah. no. I'm wondering. I'm say, <laughs> there's been a brouhaha, has Yeah, been. Nick, I'm going to say that's probably something that we don't want to get too far deep into. <laughs> there's a select board meeting happening right now that I was on before, right before this meeting. I just want to talk all about it. Yep. A topic for a different time, but I think there would be a way around the brouhaha that's happening if we had reason to do this again or wanted to do this again, but I'll just leave that there. Many You're people feel there. the same way. Yeah. Many staff included. But we're working on it. Awesome. Good. Julie, I have no changes for the uh, March notes. Oh, and neither do I. Nor do I. Okay. Nor do I. I wasn't there, so I'm gonna abstain from voting. That's just so you don't have to read them. I read them before. I read them a long time ago. <laughs> All right, so um, I'll make a motion um, to accept the CPDC minutes for uh, now. I changed March. the page. March. What was the date? Ninth. March 9th. I don't think we made any amendments, did we? So, mm -hmm. all right. I'll second. All right. Um, for a vote, I vote yes. Nick? Yes. Heather? Yes. Pam? Yes. And Rachel, abstain. Uh, abstain. All right. Okay. So now the next meeting was May eleventh. That was your first Zoom meeting. It was. You were right. So, so Julie, there on page, bottom of page two, top of page three. I think there's a copy paste error going on. I, um, okay. The sentence. Mr. Weston made an announcement to continue the public hearing 
um, at 258, 262 Main Street to June 8th is repeated three times under each, uh, under three different, uh, four different entries. Oh, um, I see. Gotcha. Yep. 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 I will fix that. So whatever happened to Johnson Wood? Were they supposed to be on tonight? No. No? Not necessarily. We, we, okay. We're, we're waiting for them to submit more information. Okay. Actually, this, the decision that you guys issued was appealed. Ah. So. No action needed from you. Uh, town council will defend the town if needed. Julie, you might want to update the location on these notes. Oh, okay. Oh, right. <laughs> Can we just read my my um, comment at the very end of this, which is that I asked that we should keep agendas shorter and multiple public hearings should not be discussed at the same time. <laughs> this was in May. <laughs> Say that again, Rachel. Nothing, I'm just foreshadowing for our really fun meeting last time. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, the agenda was short. It was a short agenda. <laughs> Multiple public hearings, so. <laughs> I do not have any other comments on this one from May 11th. Nor do I. So are these considered amended because I gave you comments, Julie? Yes. Yeah, and we also had more comments. Yeah. Okay, I have no changes on this either. Okay, so move to accept meeting minutes for May 11th, 2020 as amended. Second. Um, Tony, I trust that if you're, if you see anything, even though you're not voting, if you see something, you're going to speak up yeah you know it's hard to shut <laughs> me up <laughs> <laughs> i i just wanted to make sure um uh so roll call vote i vote yes nick yes heather yes pam yes rachel yes all right one more set right Yes, June 8th. That was the last time when you went till midnight. <laughs> There's seven pages of minutes. That's actually not that much. No, it's not.
and Julie, what about the sign permit application for Swiss Bakers? Um, we still haven't received their official application yet. Okay, and they also have not deferred that to another time? Well, there's no actual hearing time frame associated with okay. permit, so they don't have to. Um, okay. We had it as a placeholder because we thought they might be ready last time. Um, but they're working some things through the historical commission and they're reworking their design package, so. Oh, okay. I have no changes. For the last meeting. Okay. No changes. No changes. No changes. Just note that these will also still be as amended because Nick changed a few things earlier, had some comments. Okay. Move okay. to, oh, sorry, Nick. Are you, yeah. Move to accept meeting minutes for June 8th, 2020, as amended. Second. All right. For a roll call vote, I vote yes. Nick? Yes. Heather? Yes. Pam? Yes. Rachel? Yes. All right. We're caught up. Yeah. Awesome. Thank Except you. A lot of meetings. Now we have more minutes. Yeah. Go. Well, <laughs> that always happens, right? <clears throat> yep. Um, I can give you a quick update. Uh, the town submitted an application to be redesignated as a housing choice community back in March, and we received a affirmative um, designation just last week. So super. Here. Again, a housing choice community, and which uh, to recap really quick, it just means that we produced either 3% new units or 300 new units within the last five years. And then we can check uh, a number of various boxes of best practices around housing um, and inclusion and you know all those cool. motherhood and apple pie things um, that planners love. So um, that we are now in the, the lined up queued up for you know more grant opportunities and being able to check off that we are a housing choice community makes us you know more favorable in the eyes of people uh doling out grant uh, like other types of grants so there's housing choice grants and then there's other types of grants that were uh you know we're more favorable for getting so um i don't know andrew do you want to give an update on mvp and art box yeah, um, so we did officially submit the MVP report to the state, uh, Weston and Sampson finalized the draft report and the risk matrix. So we sent that to the state and we're awaiting official confirmation to be designated, but I believe we're still eligible for action grants if there are opportunities this fall. Um, I haven't seen anything yet, but we might, may or may not be in the pipeline for any, ready for any of those yet anyways. Uh, and hopefully within the next week or two, you will see some artists around the downtown area painting the utility boxes along Haven Street and Harden Street and at Elm Park. So it's about seven boxes in total, I believe, seven local artists, um, all of which we have not done this before. Um, so it will be a learning process, but we have a great team and great art artwork. So we're excited to present that hopefully before the fall street fair everything will be wrapped up if there is a fall street fair yeah. there you go yeah. yeah nice nice to hear and then i just remembered another thing um pursuant to the instructional motion at town meeting in november about becoming a community um i am working with um a couple members of the select board 
um, some consultants from MAPC, the Department of Energy Resources, and the Reading Municipal Light Department. Um, there's a group of us that are kind of working to move those efforts along. Also, the Climate Advisory Committees will play, is and will play a very important role in that process. So I will be giving a brief update. I think I will be giving a brief update to the select board next Monday night um, about where we are with the five criteria and um, the coordination effort. So if you're interested in that, uh, I think it's pretty late on the agenda, but I can, if you're interested in that, let me know and I can shoot you an email. That's great. Great, thank you. Is there anything else? No, how's really? the uh, reshaping of the roads going? You tell me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my question is, are they actually gonna repave South Main Street now that they've ripped it up again? The My understanding is that the road diet pilot is still underway. Um, they're going to spend another couple months probably gathering data on how it works in town and, and whether more additional changes are needed before they do the final course of pavement and the final striping plan. Okay. Great. So Rachel, I think the answer to your, the other answer to your question is yes, there will be another course of pavement uh, that goes yes. over top of the, the pavement that is now horrible. Um, it was the new oh, pavement oh, and the trench. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, part of the reason for the pilot is to, you know, see, see where there are, you know, uh, striping issues and um, fix them. So that's what we're doing. Or that's what the state is doing. Correct. All right. Great. So I think the only problem I've noticed is in front of um, the bagel shop. Which is a perpetual problem anyway. No, I think we made it worse. I think really? we made the northbound side worse because we, we pinch it at one to one lane as you pass by it to have the free left hand turn. Oh. So northbound you have one lane if somebody's in a queue, there's no place to go. Cool. I will say even with the, even there, with, I don't get up that early, so even with the wider shoulder, Nick, because they widened the shoulder so people could pull over more and get more people don't yeah, they don't know how to pull over. Yeah. Okay. Well what happened? What happens now is, it, at least when it's really um, uh, high time, they will only let you pull in um, if you're coming south on Main Street in that turn lane. Um, and if you're going north, they make you keep going, turn around and come back. And that gets confusing. So, yeah. I will say, except for right at that spot, I feel a heck of a lot safer turning left onto that, left onto Main Street and driving down Main Street. Yeah. That's my own personal perspective. Yeah, yeah and I'm, you know, yeah, and I, 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 I'm off of Summer Ave, and the left turn from Main Street to Summer Ave has been a lifesaver for me. It just feels significantly safer. Well, that's all, you know, really good feedback, and we tend to hear more of the negatives than the positives. So if you want to go on the website and just log that in, that would be great. Um, okay. We can do that. Yeah. Just all your thoughts. Nick, put your thoughts about Bagel World, all of them. <laughs> but we, we, we need some more positives to outweigh the negatives. So. Okay. Don't Julie, question. Mm -hmm. Is Liquor Junction planning on showing up anytime soon? Uh, for expanding? Yes. Ooh. So I will look into if they've submitted a building plan. Um, typically for site plan review, we would need to um, add, add gross square footage or modify the exterior of the building for the site. Um, or the parking. So if any of those things are happening, then they certainly will come before you. Okay. I, I, I put the status on that. The building division would never push anything along without asking me. Yeah. So I'll check. All right. Thank you. But that being said, that is a pretty unique building in town that yeah. things can happen without yeah. necessarily coming to us because they can make, right, changes can happen and yeah. it just doesn't trigger. Right. 
Right, so if they don't trigger the thresholds, which typically I'm asked to review to make sure that, that something like that isn't triggering the thresholds. And then, yeah, John has a good point. Something to be worked on. All right, anyone, questions, comments? No, nope. guys. All right. All right. We can wrap this up well right. earlier than our last meeting. Awesome. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you for coming and providing great comments. Nice to see um, you. Wonderful. Thank you. Another motion. Please. Uh, motion to, uh, you know what? I can't even think of the word. Uh, adjourn. 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 I was like, convene is not the right word. <laughs> adjourn. <laughs> Second. Uh, but. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That was five zero. I heard them all. You guys see. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Aye. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Andrew. No problem. Thank you, Julie.